TV, another installment of Tally TV in the story of Weta Claus, and lemonade sales turn sour in DC. Hello, and thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Michelle Seven, I am your anchor. In local news, the parking meter plan was approved by City Council. Keene will be running a test with two new parking meter systems on Main Street. School is back in session. Keene State College and Keene Valley Community College will be starting up the fall semester next week. Throughout the country, tuition costs are on the rise, while community colleges see drastic increases in enrollment. Keene is no exception to this rule. Tuition at Keene State University is up 20% per year, and River Valley Community College is up 8%. The total enrollment for the 2011 fall semester can't be figured at this time since students are still enrolling, but the trend is expected to continue upward. From 2007 to 2010, there was a 70% increase in credits sold, with River Valley Community College being responsible for the ma vast majority of this increase. This weekend played a host to a National Lemonade Day. Our producer filed this report. A symbol of entrepreneurship that began more than 130 years ago, lemonade stands are as much a part of American culture as baseball. The first media reports of lemonade stands begins with the New York Times in 1879 and a reference to a New York City shopkeeper setting one up outside his store. From 1880 onward, there are many reports of stands being set up in both rural and urban locations and cited as an easy way to make money. With the overabundance of laws in our current day, the lemonade stand is one of the last vestiges of publicly accepted law-breaking. This past weekend in Keene, two such stands were set up to mark the National Lemonade Stand Day. One stand was located at Railroad Square on Main Street. At this simple stand, Ocean was attentive to customers and offering blueberries and cucumber water in addition to lemonade. My name is Ocean and I'm putting up this lemonade stand because I've been wanting to do a lemonade stand ever since, I don't know, well I don't really know that. Her father Richard Gibson was on hand to offer assistance. It's been going pretty well, I think she's really happy with it. She's been excited about doing a lemonade stand for quite some time and uh, with all the crackdowns someone put together a lemonade freedom event and we figured it would be the perfect opportunity. She learned, um, how to put together food for a large number of people. She's uh, making change. She's being entrepreneurial in general, and uh, it's helping her independence. I, I've seen her just as the days progressed, uh, get more and more confident with the sales. On West Street by Ashwaylot Park, Stephanie had her own stand set up. Stephanie's lemonade. With the help of friends, she was able to solicit traffic that had stopped at the traffic light. Commerce, when free, is so much better. Police did not intervene in Keene, but the nation's capital was a different story. A lemonade stand is set up on the lawn of the nation's capital, and it doesn't take long for police to take notice. Here to the freedom! Here you are, dearie. Have a lovely afternoon. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks a lot. There's no vending or capital. Soon, several officers surround the stand and intimidate the patrons and vendors alike. Yeah. Ten cents for some lemonade, guys. Two more? Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much for your business. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Would you like a cup as well? Don't be intimidated. Don't be intimidated. Don't let the, don't be intimidated by them. Even cameras are met with aggression. Whoa, whoa! Hey, hey, hey! Private property. Don't got that on camera. Please don't break equipment, man. In a video released on Adam Kokesh's YouTube account, officers can be seen intimidating children. They want to give you something for free, they'll give it to you for free. They're not giving them any money. Don't give them any money. We are free people. You are. Have a good afternoon. This is vending without a permit, without my face. Vending without a permit. So you guys want to be arrested for your cause of lemonade liberation. Ma'am. 
Come liberate the lemons. Eventually, the officers created a blockade around the lemon stand, preventing patrons from coming close enough to make the sale. The vendors proceeded to walk out to the buyers to make the sale and were arrested. I'm sorry, you're under arrest. Leave these people alone. Leave them alone. I am getting arrested for selling them. Do you guys have services? Lemonade, 10 cents, guys. We've got a few cups. You sell lemonade. Why are you kidding me? I'm selling lemonade. All told, Meg McLean, Catherine Dill, and William Duffield were arrested. The charges include vending without a permit, unlawful conduct, and failure to obey. They all have scheduled court appearances on October 4th. For our discussion panel today, we have Heike Corser, Ademo Freeman, and special guest Z. Thanks, Michelle. Before we get into talking about lemonade, how about you introduce yourself a little bit for us, Z? Hi, um, I'm Z, and I'm here as a pundit. I'm filling in just for fun. I'm home from college, actually. I'm a sophomore in New Jersey, so this is just a fun way to pass the time. Awesome. Well, it's great to have you. What do you Thank think you. about uh, selling lemonade? Have any of you ever uh, sold lemonade on the street as a child? I have, or an adult? I have not. I've given out lemonade at marathons when I was little, but I've never sold it. Never uh, sold lemonade? No, I just wanted all the racers to uh, be hydrated. <laughs> and you were giving them lemonade with sugar? <laughs> I was like seven, okay? Well, I'm sure they got a surprise, but I mean, I think most children have... Oh, yeah. Uh, put out a lemonade stand. I did as well. I certainly sold lemonade. In fact, one of my earliest memories was my mother teaching me how to make lemonade with a friend from the neighborhood, and she bought all of the things that we needed, and then after we sold the lemonade, we paid her back what she the, the money that she supplied us with, and then we got to keep the rest. Right. It, was a very, it was a very great lesson in... Uh, how to make money. Actually. Well, yeah, I mean, so. the video that was shown, there's a lot of comments on the YouTube channel about this is ridiculous, pick something bigger. But the I think to me, the message is bigger because if you're allowed to sell lemonade, I mean, this is uh, educational experience for a child. So it's very educational. Right. Counting Absolutely. change, social interactions, right. like you said, planning yep. a budget. That's what Stephanie did in the uh, video we see in. I went a couple times to yeah. hers, and by the end of the day, she was able to give me back change. Right. I mean, she needed help at first, and by then, she realize, oh wait, she gave me a dollar, she gets two quarters back. Right. Well, let's um, focus for a minute. Why was there a national day for lemonade selling? Why would there ever be a time where the nation would all decide that we are going to sell lemonade on one day? Well, exactly. I mean, there has been a crackdown with lemonade stands in the past couple of months where officers from all over the country have stopped this. Uh, it's allowed with permits and regulations. So you're saying that cops and other officials are coming by and shutting down six, seven, eight to 13 year old lemonade stands. Yeah, and I mean, I think we can look at it as not only is it wrong to like, you know, uh, limit a child of this memory of its life, but it's, it's also educational and it can also be looked at the big picture. You know, when I traveled with LibriaOnTour.com, we were in Las Vegas and guys were selling bottles of water. So essentially lemonade, whatever, selling sure, a sure. beverage. And here, instead of these guys being on welfare or you know, leeching off the system. They're out there trying to make a buck and cops are chasing them down too. So you're talking about wasted resources, Absolutely. court time. And you know, now these guys are sick of being chased. So what, they go on welfare or maybe they commit that's, a crime? You know, that's really too bad considering that the United States is so proud of the fact that capitalism is the backbone of our country, that we are able to go out and make a product and sell a product and through that become successful or not successful depending on the product and how you sell it. But yeah to teach children at such a young age that no, it's bad to make something and then sell it on your own. That, right. What kind of message is that sending to I'm sorry, kids? I'm not sending a six-year-old into City Hall to get a permit to have right? a lemonade stand on a nice no. day. But then why would you send a 25-year-old? Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that either. For lemonade or for anything? <laughs> right? I don't know. So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> this is, this could be the lesson that people could be learning from sure. this. It's not about lemonade or the kids. It's about in all business. Why, are we, if, you, if, if you restrict these ch children from having this memory or educational experience, as I see it, you're going to restrict them from, 
you know, in, in later in life, doing business, you know, well and properly. And I have to jump through these hoops. It's a bunch of expenses. And this is why you see a drain in the economy because Absolutely. the government won't let us do business from ground up. And the thing is, is nobody is telling people that you have to buy lemonade from a certain lemonade stand. It's all voluntary exchanges where you can opt out. If you don't want lemonade, then don't buy lemonade. Right. If the cops don't want lemonade, don't buy lemonade. But what about the FDA? They weren't there to inspect the lemonade. How do we know the lemonade's safe? That's ridiculous. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but that's if the argument people get. It, don't go back to Stephanie's lemonade stand. You right. know, I mean, that's just an example. And tell I'm, your friends not to go to Stephanie's lemonade there you stand. There made you sick. But yeah, I don't, I don't think that the government having its hand in lemonade stands or permits keeps anybody safe in anything, whether it's building a home or running a restaurant. Sure. Right. Are you aware that, uh, Al do you know of Alex, little girl? She had cancer and she started selling lemonade to raise money for cancer, uh, research when she was four and there's been like 35 million dollars raised since she died because unfortunately she did die oh. but because um, they shut her down right like no, they didn't, well, well i mean not exactly, exactly because they shut her down but the problem the is why she got so much publicity is because mm -hmm. she was shut down absolutely and actually she was shut down for this yeah she was she was shut down for selling lemonade for charity for charity now she's not the only one so all over the United States, if people are selling lemonade, even for charity for this particular cancer research, they're being shut down. They're not making a profit. They're doing something out of the goodness of their heart. No tax dollars involved. Nobody is saying, holding a gun to anyone's head, saying, you need to pay for my kids' cancer research. These kids and their families are going out and making a difference, mm -hmm. and then they're being told that they cannot. I mean, I appreciate the sympathetic sympathetic side to the <laughs> story is tongue twister there sure um but yet i don't i don't want to limit that to just people who are ill should be allowed to Correct. sell lemonade or, or just charities or smoke marijuana i think that anybody you know people should be allowed to conduct business in a fair voluntary manner with whoever the customer is absolutely that agrees. and the same with the the drug issue i mean last year uh during pumpkin fest um i helped out with a bake sale for one of the local uh, shelters right. here, and we were shut down. Why were really? you? What, what did the Keen police say? Why did they shut you down? They really didn't want to shut me down. It was Center Stage Productions. Center Stage Productions shut you down because yeah. well, the no police did. The police because shut you we down. were technically in the footprint of Pumpkin Fest, and you needed a permit to set something up at Pumpkin Fest. Really? But and what is Pumpkin oh, Fest? The uh, community event on public property. Yes. You Wait. Know, so, so was anyone else at Pumpkin Fest? Selling to uh, for charity, raise, yeah, yes. M well, actually, mo the, most of the booths were. So okay. So but what about also boy, the Boy Scouts were shut down, and they were actually on private property. They were on Corner News property. Really. And they were shut down. Really. Yeah. How interesting. For cotton candy. But it was the excuse <laughs> was that you didn't have a permit, right? <laughs> it was so sad. Um, <laughs> for Pumpkin Fest, yes. And how did that make you feel? That it like what were the repercussions oh, I was angry. of it? Well, I can see that. Yeah, but I, I mean, was threatened arrest several times. You were doing times. it for a cause, but that cause suffered, right? I mean, it, 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 I think we ended up making more money than we would have because of everything. Oh, Everyone was like, moved. what? This is ridiculous that the police tried to shut you down. Here's some money. We don't even want to buy anything. Just here's some money. All right. Well, bravo to the Keen community for that. But yeah, I mean, absolutely. if only people would say, no, put them back, you know, and sure. leave them alone. Absolutely. So I was, I was really impressed with them. Um, how the lemonade stands went here in Keene the, this weekend. Well, what about in D.C.? I mean, they were arrested. Of course, they did set up a lemonade stand on the lawn of the Capitol, which is and But it's our Capitol. I, I know. So. All right, with that, I think we're just about done here with our segment, and we're going over to Michelle Seven. We present you with another installment of Tally TV and the story of Bob, Bob Constantine. Let's watch. I don't think a man's free should be taken away when we have a term with him. Objection, Your Honor. Get up, stand up. Stand up for your right. Get up, stand up. When we first met, I asked you to be the constable of the I'm reminding you that every one of you you own your mind, that's your right of conscience, and you should own your body. Now, jurors have the power to acquit, to vote not guilty. There's nothing anybody can do if you decided 
that's what you want to do. You can't be punished, arrested, or stopped for exercising your right of conscience. That's the power that you hold. Jurors exercised their power of nullification a long time ago. The abolitionists were around. They wouldn't put their neighbor in jail for helping a runaway slave own themselves. They said, I'm not going to put that person in jail. That's the law. I'd probably break that law. If you came to my house and you knocked on the door and you were a runaway slave and it was illegal for me to let you in, I'm going to let you in. <coughs> so that's my conscience, and that's my right. Walk out that way. I want to remind you, no matter what you think you've seen, no matter any of that, the state has failed to produce any victim. No. I don't think a man's freedom should be taken away. Members of the jury, uh, the defendant's last statement is stricken from the record of instructing you to disregard it. Just a few moments ago, uh, you heard uh, the judge give you some instructions. Those are known as the Wentworth instructions. Uh, part of what he instructed you on, uh, there's a word should convict. Notice he said should, and he said must convict. The judge can't direct your verdict. Only the jury has that power. It's beyond the state, it's beyond the judge, it's beyond any of this big, thick rule book. It's completely up to you. Nothing can happen to you. You vote to acquit, if you vote to be guilty, it's completely your decision. You walk out of here, it's done. Now, when you Deliberate. If you reach a verdict, it must be unanimous. That doesn't mean that you must reach a verdict. There's no rule saying that you must reach a verdict. For instance, if there are 12 of you, and 11 of you find me innocent, and there's one of you holding up thinking, hey, I think he's guilty, it's not a democracy. It's not, well, we, we voted, and, and now we, have, we must return this verdict. It could go the other way. If some of you think it's one thing and some of you think it's the other, you don't have to say, well, okay, we've got to get out of here. Um, it's time to go. I'm getting tired. i got to pick up the kids. No matter what. Don't let them tell you. That's up to you. What happens at that point is, it goes on for a little while, there's a hung jury in this process to going to another phase. You guys will probably be gone after that. Now, I think I pointed out that there's no victim. I think you've heard testimony of a good person. I've never harmed anyone. Now, my conscience is pretty strong. I'm standing up in front of you because I believe it's hard to do. Hard to exercise your right of conscience. You can't be taken away from you. You've heard a lot of things, you've got a lot of things to think about. But I'm asking you, if your conscience speaks to you, you have the right to exercise it. It's right in our book. 
on your rights. It's unalienable and it cannot be taken away for a question. I'm just asking each one of you to think about things, to see a human being who's doing something for himself, but for other people. That's why I'm here. I'm asking for you to vote not guilty if that's what your conscience compels you to do. Do you want to support good people who disobey bad laws? The Civil Disobedience Evolution Fund was created to support brave men and women who are saying no to aggressive government. With your contribution, you can support civil disobedience. Damo, what are your thoughts on Bob, his trial, and even more in general, just this failed war on drugs? Thanks, Michelle. The story of Bob is a sad one, and the war on drugs is even sadder. Um, with the uh, prison, police, militarization of all of it, um, I think it's a big waste, and I think the community really needs to seriously look at ways that we can uh, combat the war on drugs and uh, try to end this violence that comes with it. What do you guys think? Well, I know that uh, a lot of the law enforcers that I've talked to are really worried about the violence that is associated with drugs. Now, I have never actually seen someone who's been high who's also been violent. I'm sorry, but the term violent stoner is like an oxymoron. All right. <laughs> I mean, they're just pretty laid back and they're not hurting anyone. If they want to ingest whatever they want to ingest, I mean, sniffing glue isn't illegal and it gets you high. Heiko, what do you think some folks in Keene can look into to... I think a real eye-opener would be the amount of taxpayers' money, um, uh, the amount of money that we're all ultimately putting into the war on drugs. I mean, between jailing, the court system, you know, the policemen. I mean, we have a huge, just in Keene, we have this huge police force. I mean, right. for Absolutely. pot. Come right. on. And there's like, you know, the whole nature of that it's a victimless crime. You know, if you're not free to Absolutely. put or digest what you want in your body, then like, how free are you? You know, you're not really very free, so. I mean, I have sugar level issues. I shouldn't eat pasta, but I do. Does, does that, should I go to jail Should for eating? Does pasta? it make you loopy? It really does, actually. <laughs> it ma it gives me a very high feeling. I'm like, woo, for eating pasta. Should I go to jail for that? Absolutely not. No. So what's not. what's the difference between a little leaf? Well, the government <laughs> does the government does want to regulate the salt that's in your food. So maybe it's oh. not pasta, but it'll be salt intake or something. Like take away trans fat. <laughs> Damn it! Yeah. Can't have any trans fat. But. Um, <laughs> Yeah, to the violence, though, in answer to, you know, people say that violence comes with drug use, and I think that's, if it is true, it's true because it's, it's uh, made by the prohibition the of drugs. The right. environment where people go, go to buy drugs, whether it be marijuana or heroin or cocaine, I mean, whatever it is, there's gang activity that is related to selling of drugs, in which case, if it were in a legitimate store, where some a clerk could say, I'm sorry to the person who's coming in, but I'm going to use my judgment and not sell you drugs. Or, like a bartender does with alcohol. Exactly. It's like if someone's had too much to drink, the bartender says, dude, give me your keys. Let me call. No big deal. No, exactly. I mean, if the, the, the violence, too, with like people who are hooked, seeking their fix, stealing, they would also stop because they could probably be employed at somewhere that was selling drugs, like a pharmacy uh, of any other uh, sort. But uh, the, the whole violence with it, again, it's just created by prohibition. The police, the, the government, or excuse me, the uh, courts, the jails, we can all find a lot better things to do their time. I mean, jails right now, uh, the Cheshire County Jail is full of uh, inmates who are not only there for drug offenses, but now they're working there as well. You know, so it creates more problems. I was talking right. to the officers. They're not police officers and they are not employed through the sheriff's department. They are actually employed through the court, which is something that is different in New Hampshire than a lot of states. So they are not allowed to carry guns. They are not, uh, they can't arrest, they cannot arrest anyone. So we were talking to them about uh, what, how they, reacted with the prisoners and you know they said that almost it was a really extremely high baffling number of 80 or something 85 percent of those that were in Cheshire Correctional Facility were non-violent crimes. Right? Yeah I mean one time I asked Rick Van Winkler he had 207 inmates in there and he said seven of them were violent offenders against a person so someone who used force against another individual or damage their property. I'm sorry, but I don't want my tax dollars going to house a criminal 
who was found with a blunt on him or smoking marijuana. It's like, let the poor guy go. My tax dollars are not, they shouldn't be there. Right, like what, what is more important, punishing someone for smoking what they want or punishing the taxpayer's money for living in Keene and having Keene so strict? Exactly, that's, that's, that's exactly what I was gonna I say mean, is that. Either way, someone's being punished and right now, Keene is being punished. Absolutely. Right. For With not the, taking a stand. The war on drugs provides a lose, lose, lose situation. The individual who is targeted loses because they go to jail, maybe their job, whatever. The person's family or the, and the government loses because they have to spend time and resource. The family has to spend time and resource. And then the taxpayers, people who weren't even involved not at all. Not only that, wherever this person worked, they're out an employee. Yep. I mean, and whoever was dealing the pot. They're out of customer. I mean, I mean, I'm an actual victim of the war on drugs, and when I was I was uh, caught selling marijuana, and w one time when the police were transporting me to the jail, they said, "Oh, I know someone's gonna pick up your job tomorrow." You know, so they knew, the people who arrested me and like were taking yeah. this violent drug dealer off wow. the street even admitted to me that tomorrow someone else would have taken over my clients, my customers, and maybe that, I wasn't violent, I never used a gun or threatened well, Damon, anybody my Damon, we are friends and I could vouch for everyone watching that you are not a violent person. I haven't Absolutely. hit anybody yet. How about yet. that? <laughs> That's good, but no, it, it, there's just the myth of violence coming with drugs is so Absolutely. wrong. Plus, we can't, prohibition doesn't prevent the people who are violent on drugs and therefore let them. And I say that because we do have laws against murder, destruction of Absolutely. property, whether you're sober or not. So it's very hypocritical to have a law for drunk driving, yet when you're sober, you're still punished if you get in a sure. car accident. Absolutely. Well, all right, back to Bill, who is, what, facing seven years? Bob. Sorry, Bob. Bob. Yes. Sorry. Bob is facing seven years in prison for growing, growing marijuana. marijuana. Yes, on his property, not harming anybody, lives way out in Grafton, and they were, char they were threatening to charge him with seven years for yeah. This man lives in the middle of nowhere. Who is he harming? His neighbors? Well, I mean, even if you live in downtown New York, he should still be able to grow a pot plant, in it's my it, opinion, absolutely. if he owns it's the property. Right. But so, Seven years for this? But here, and here's another problem is snitches. So his neighbor comes to his property, talks to him, goes through this whole deal. But I'm really glad that Bob stood up for our rights, everybody's, didn't take the plea, plea deal. He did not take the plea deal. Put seven years of his life on the line, and he ended up getting no felony six months. So back to Michelle. Well, thank you for watching tonight. As always, you can contact us by emailing tv at freekeen.com. I'm Michelle Seven saying peace be with you and yours. <laughs>